Good evening. Today I want to talk about how God sometimes gets very angry with the disobedience of people. Especially when he is teaching them and they, he tells them, don't do this, and they do it. My mother used to tell me when I was a little child, when she perceived that I was doing something wrong, she used to tell me, son, be careful with God. He can be very angry. And what I'm going to read to you from 1 Samuel is exactly a story of how God, merciful God, and you have to remember something. For those that have been following me, and I have said it many times, and I will say it many more times, the God of the Old Testament is not the Father. The Father is in heaven. He hasn't come to this earth. He will come to this earth at the end of his plan of salvation. But in the meantime, you have to remember that Jesus Christ is the Creator God. That Jesus Christ is the God of the Old Testament. Some people, of course, because of the false churches out there, they believe that all you have to do is believe in Jesus and it will be done. Well, God is more demanding than that. You will see how he demands for people to do what he says. And if they don't, he can hand out very serious punishment. And I will not read the whole chapter, but I will read some scriptures. You can read it. It's, it's uh, 1 Samuel 15, and it will be verses 1 to 23. I have chosen a couple of verses. I'll tell you the story. The Lord instructed Samuel, his prophet, to anoint Saul as first king of, of Israel. And uh, he instructed Samuel to tell Saul, the new king, to destroy a nation, a group of people called the Amalekites. And that's because when Israel was coming out of Egypt, the Amalekites uh, came upon them suddenly and killed a lot of Israelites. Now, that's the background. Uh, and here's what the Lord said to Samuel. Now, in verse 3, I'm not going to read all of them. I'm going to have to read you some scriptures only to give you the idea of how strict God can be. Let me put it in better words. How strict Christ can be. Of course, we know that the Father and the Son work together. So, the picture of the little Lord Jesus, the picture of the little Lord Jesus, that's a false picture. In verse 3, now this is, this is uh, what Samuel said to, God told Samuel to tell him. Now, go and attack. This is the instructions for the new king given by God through Samuel. Now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all, all that they have and do not spare them, but kill both man and woman. And I want you to get ready for a shock in our culture. And destroy all man and woman, infant and nursing child, 
ox, sheep, camels, and donkeys destroy. Now, this is something here that we have that is very, very difficult to swallow. It's very difficult to swallow that Christ, who died for us, instructed Samuel to tell Saul, the king, to kill children, fetuses, he doesn't say that, but basically, to kill the people. Now, why would he do that when Christ is so merciful? We don't know everything there is. Probably they had some kind of serious uh, uh, gene that God wanted eliminated. All I know is that, and I will continue with the story, Saul went and ambushed the Amalekites and killed a lot of them, all of them, except the king. He captured the king, and the Lord had told him to kill the king. Now, when the Lord saw that, well, he not only saved the king, but he also saved the best, the best cattle, the best oxen, the best lambs, the best of everything. And then the Lord noticed, the Lord got upset. The Lord got upset. His order was to kill everything. Don't leave anything there. Uh, this is Jesus Christ. That's so merciful with us. What is the lesson that we need to learn here? It's a very important lesson. Extremely important for our spiritual life and for our physical life. So it so happened that uh, uh, when, when Samuel confronted the king, King Saul, he said, you know, I did exactly what the Lord said. I, I, I killed all the Amalekites, except uh, the king I did not kill. And, uh, and I destroyed everything, so the Lord said, and what is the, the, what is the noise I hear? I hear the sheep and I hear the cattle. What is this noise? So he said, I'm, I'm paraphrasing because I don't want to spend a long time here so that you can understand the topic. So uh, he said, oh, the people, you know, the people, this, was the, this is what the king said, the people, uh, the people saved the animals for to offer sacrifices to God. Okay, and uh, and God was very upset. He was very upset because the order was you kill everything. Uh, and in verse eight, and now the Lord, uh, the Lord sent you on a mission to kill all of those people and he said everything and the king saved the best and then he pretended or he said that he was worshiping God and he was doing exactly what the Lord said now I want you to think very carefully folks we are living in a society that is absolutely farce you know, you hear now in the political arena, all of them are Christians. All of the all of the candidates, you know, this is a Christian nation, uh, a Christian nation that that God is going to bless. Well, that's politics, but. Are they doing what God says? They haven't been. They haven't been taught by God. They have been taught by Satan, the devil, through some churches. So actually, 
The poor people of this country and of the whole world do not know what God is really telling them. So what did the Lord do? Well, eventually he destroyed uh, Saul. And guess who was chosen as the next king of Israel? Can anyone tell me? David. Huh? David. David, yes. David. And David was not a saint either, as you already know. So when you read that Bible, and I want you to read that Bible, and you read the lives of these people that God was working with, blessing them, these people were actually far away in doing what the Lord really said they would do. But you know what? Here's the contrast. The same God, Christ, that told Samuel to annihilate babies, whatever, everything, is the same God that forgave lots of sins from the kings. The kings of Israel were very corrupt. And they never did what the Lord wanted. But once the Lord blesses and determines He has blessed Israel, the tribes of Israel. Now, there's something that we need to understand. Uh, Saul was playing religion. He was playing churchianity. Oh yes, Lord, yeah, I will do it. I did everything you said. Yeah, of course. You know, it's like we if we, if we said, which we never say. Oh yes, yes, I keep, I keep the day, I keep the day, I keep a day for you. We meet uh, in a church every Sunday. Well, but I said Saturday. Yeah, but the people wanted to worship on Sunday. You cannot. Worship God with half obedience. If you do, He will destroy you. He will not make you, He will not save you. Now, I want to go to um, Isaiah 1. Okay. Isaiah 1, and I'm going to read verses 10 to 20. Maybe not read them all, but tell you the essence. The Lord, the Lord God, Christ, has suffered actually a lot with people. I remember when I was teaching school, how I suffered with some students that did not want to learn. Regardless of what you wanted to teach them, they did not want to learn. I just met a lady, because I always meet lots of ladies at the, at the grocery store, and this lady came up to me and she said, you know, you don't remember me, do you? I said, did I teach you school? And she said, no, I was a teacher when you were a teacher too, but I, I came later. And, and she said, I just retired two months ago. She said, I am so happy that I'm not teaching those people, those kids, they are horrible. And so you can imagine, Mr. Rojas, how happy I am that I retired. People are not teachable. People are not teachable. Now, uh, I'm going to read to you some parts of Isaiah uh, 1 from 10 to 20. Not all of it, but you will read it, want you to read it at home. Hear the word of the Lord. You rulers of Sodom, 
Give ear unto the law of your God, you people of Gomorrah. I know that I will be alive in spirit when the Lord faces the whole world as after the first resurrection and the period of, of teaching. I'll be there to teach too. Uh, verse 11, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices to me? says the Lord, I have had enough. Notice, like, he talks like a man. I have had enough of burnt offerings and rams and the fat of cattle I cannot stand. In other words, religion for the sake of being religious absolutely makes God mad. Folks, I want you to be prepared spiritually because all the signs that we are seeing indicate the termination, the very, very soon, the termination of Satan's rule on this earth. We know that Satan is the king of this world. But what is it that the Lord wants out of us? Now, well, let's go to verse 18. Come now and let us reason together. Say, says the Lord, though your sins are like, what is this, scarlet? They shall be like snow, white as snow. Though they are uh, like crimson, they shall be like wool. In other words, your sins that you have committed, do not, do not. When God wants to save you, are not counted. They're forgiven. And you will see, uh, you will see that what he wants is for people to do what he says. And now people ask me, not people in this church, but that's very difficult. Because how do I know what God wants? Well, that's very easy. All you have to do is read the Bible for what it says. If he says keep the seventh day holy, you keep Saturday. If he says don't eat, uh, don't eat pork, you don't eat pork. He gave you what to eat and what not to eat. Now, what do people do? They are disregarding God. The same thing that happened to God in the Old Testament with people. You know, Christ is so patient. I can't even begin to imagine. I don't think I would last one month being Christ with those people. They were so horrible. You know, and nowadays, they are so horrible. Uh, if you want to see a, a story of horrors, <laughs> watch the, uh, the, uh, uh, what's going on in politics, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You sit there, oh, you sit there, quite, quite. you sit there, and uh, you can't believe what they say about each other. Well, but I would say that according to God, all of these things might be true, but God has a goal. And I'm gonna tell you folks, he has called you and me, and he's teaching us is teaching us for a purpose. You make sure that you do what God says and nothing else. Because if you do, He will remove His Holy Spirit from us and will not, will not uh, save us. 
God is not interested, if you read uh, Isaiah, uh, you will read that God is not interested in churchianity. What you have in this world is perfect churchianity. It is not God's religion. Now, now uh, I want to shorten the message uh, somehow. And it's a very important message to realize you have to do what God says. If God says, keep the Sabbath holy, you can't keep Sunday. If God says, uh, you love, you, you don't lie, you can't become a politician. You know, you can't go around lying if God says, Love people. You can't hate the blacks or the Hispanics or the Muslims. They are under the authority of Satan at this moment. Their time of teaching is going to come. And not only that, their time of correction. Like I told you when I began my message, my mother used to say to me, my mother used to say to me, and I'm going to repeat it, but I was trying to do something bad, something that she did not like. She would look at me and, uh, and she would say, son, be careful with God. God can become very angry. And uh, that's what's happening to this world, folks. This world is getting ready for a serious tribulation. Uh, I want you to go to Matthew 10 with me. Serious tribulation. Uh, okay. Matthew 10, and beginning with uh, verse. 16. Let's see. Behold, I send you as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Now, uh, let me see. <coughs> But it says in 18, you will be brought before governors. Matthew 10, verse 18, you will be brought before governors. And uh, you will be brought before governors and kings and for the sake of my testimony. And they will deliver you to councils. You know what? I don't want to be a master, a, a, a mart, mart, martyr. But anybody that gets on TV, like I have, and tells people, you do what God says, forget about the nonsense in those churches. They're lying to you. Don't believe them, believe God. One of these days, uh, somebody's going to get mad at me. And I talk about homosexuality, that in the Old Testament, the homosexuals were stoned to death because Christ said to do that. They don't realize that the, that the Lord of the Old Testament is Christ, the same that was crucified for our sins. And when you understand, and Christ, the Bible says, the Lord does not change. Folks, we are approaching a very difficult time when we need protection from God. I'm almost sure we don't know what's going to happen to the politics of this country at this moment. But 
God does not bless disobedient people. If God says, go, take the lamp and put it down, you do that. You can't argue with God if you say, well, 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 God, can I, can I, can I, instead of putting it on the floor, it looks better here. Can I put it here? People in the church have to understand the word of God is 100% true. You do what the Lord says or you pay the consequences. And folks, we are reaching a time when the tribulation is coming. Uh, let's, let's, let's read Revelation 3 and verses 10 to 12. God is going to have to protect those that obey him. He will not protect those that are disobedient. And uh, it's very simple. God is very simple. Uh, Revelation 3, you see, and verse 18, verse 10 to 12. He who overcomes, verse 12, he who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. What if he doesn't overcome? What if he doesn't overcome? What if he doesn't want to listen to God? What if after God teaches him or her the truth, they continue in disobedience? Him who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go out of it no more. And it says, and I will write on him my, uh, my, well, can't read this, hold on. And I will, and I will write on him my new name. Oh, oh hold on, hold on, hold on. Here's another one. So, we don't know the name of God. I mean, some people, uh, some people say that the name of God is Jehovah, or others say that it's Yahweh, others say that it's whatever. We don't know the real name of God. We don't know what it says here. It says, uh, and I will give, notice, and I will write on him my new name. So what name is it that, that God is going to give us? Look, people come to this church and some of them love to say, you know, call God instead of Jesus, instead of the Father, by a name. Well, I don't say anything, okay? But I know for a fact that there's not one person on this earth that knows God's true name. So leave it alone. Leave it alone. Don't try to investigate that because this is a prophecy for a time when God is going to come and protect us. Look, this world is taking a horrible turn. If you look at the politics of the world, what is going on in the world, the, uh, the Muslims, the Arabs are very powerful and now they have atomic bombs and they're getting more and more. Then you have an, an enemy there in North Korea that wants to destroy us. Why? You know what they want to destroy the United States and Europe? You know why they want to destroy? Because it's actually religion. At least we say we are Christians. At least we say we are Christians. Those do not believe in Christ. 
we believe in Christ. Of course, we in this church believe not just the word, we believe what he says. Now, but the world is going to come against this country. You can see it. You can see it. But why? Why is it that people don't like America? Well, if you go to the history of this country, there have been wars. Uh, they, they simply hate us because they can see the blessings of this country that they don't have because they don't believe in the real God. The real God doesn't give blessings to people that don't believe in Him. What's more, the real God does not, the real God does not give you blessings unless you obey. And you have to obey what He says. And if you don't obey what He says, then you will go through a horrible, horrible, read the book of Revelation. And the book of Revelation is enough to scare anybody. Except, except, Revelation 3 and verses 10 to 12. That he will protect us. He is going to protect us. I don't worry about, well, first of all, I am old enough, I've seen enough, and uh, I'm not afraid to die, but sometimes I'm afraid to live. Some part, you know. You see here in this country, nobody's safe. Somebody's crazy, and he, he, he can buy a gun, and you saw the last shooting. The last shooting here was a sad thing. Somebody with a, a, a with a I don't think it was an AK-47. I think it was the, the, the American made uh, uh, for the army. And he just got there and started shooting with no reason. Where people have no reason because they don't believe in God. If you believed in God, if you obey what God says, you will be loving your neighbor. You will be loving people. You will be loving the laws of God. If you do what God says, he will protect you. You know, I don't worry about it. I don't worry about attacking this country. Well, there are enemies that would love to drop atomic bombs in this country. You know, I don't worry about me because I have the assurance from the book of Revelation, from the Bible, that God will protect us. Let's go to Revelation 10. And uh, 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 Revelation 3, I think, I think I'll, we read it. The Lord will protect us, Revelation 3, 10 to 12, which I read. I tell you, I'm going to finish with a beautiful, a beautiful psalm, which is uh, Psalm 34. Psalm 34. Let me see if I find it. I will bless the Lord at all times with praise shall continuously come out of my mouth. The humble shall inherit the, the humble shall be glad. And I want to read some go to 15. The eyes of the Lord are, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous 
and his ear and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those that do evil. And when you don't obey what God says, you're doing evil. All the words of God are good. To cut off the remembrance from among them from in the earth. The righteous cries out, and the Lord hears. Many, verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him of them all. He guards his bones. Not one shall be broken, which applied to Christ. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be overcome. The Lord redeems the souls of his servants, and no one of those will be condemned. If you're serving the Lord, you have an insurance policy on your life. You have an insurance <laughs> policy on your life. You are being protected by God. You remember that I started this message with what the Lord told Saul to do, and he did part of it. You cannot serve the Lord halfway. Okay? If the Lord says, do something, you can't do it. If he says, you keep my, my, my holy days, which are seven, and you keep five of them, those that you choose, you know what the Lord is saying, going to say to you? I don't know you. Who are you? I don't know you. But why, Lord? I was preaching from a pulpit. I, I, on Christmas, I gave beautiful sermons, Lord. The Lord's going to say to these people, I never knew you. Get away from me. You know, I don't want to hear that. You know, what I, we, you know what I want to hear from the Lord? Well done, good and faithful servant. May God bless us all.